and we're going to cheer on our team to victory against the New York Rangers because the Rangers are not good right now. And I shouldn't say that because then that's going to jinx it and that's going to... But you know what? They don't care. <laughs> The Caps lose 4-2 against the New York Rangers in a less than stellar trip to Madison Square Garden. But before we get all negative and down on ourselves about a pretty bad game, we have to talk about the good thing first. Ovechkin scored tonight and we all know what that means. That means he officially passes Mike Gardner for 7th all time on the NHL goal leading list. The great eight is now the great seven, all time that is. And that's pretty much the only positive there is to take away from this game. The third line actually had another pretty good game, but they've been the one consistent on the team this entire season, except for that Nick Dowd penalty in the first period, which was an extremely light call that I disagree with very, very much so, with much gusto, but he still took a penalty and they still go on a PK. It didn't bite them in the butt, but that was kind of the only one blemish the third line had this period. I mean, let's be real, people. I don't think a single defender had a good game. All seven of them, by the way. Yeah, that's right. Seven defenders this game, which that creates just a whole nother array of problems. The suspicion is, is that the Caps were in cap trouble, no pun intended, and that they had to dress seven defenders in order to stay under the cap limit for the season. And if that truly is the reason for dressing seven defenders tonight, which I don't know if that actually is the case, I haven't done the math and I really don't feel like doing the math tonight because I'm really tired and I'm going straight to bed after I film this, they really have to figure that out before next game, before the next two games, because those are against Philly, the top team in the division, who is playing really, really well right now. Although last video I said the Rangers were playing really, really badly and that we were supposed to beat them and look how that turned out, so who knows? But I'm serious, I don't think you'll find a single person who will disagree with me on this that all seven defenders had a very, very bad game. To me, this game was oddly reminiscent of the Carolina series in the 2019 playoffs. Now stay with me here on this one, let me explain. The Caps had actually a really good season in 2018, 2019. It's the season coming off the cup. It's the first season that Todd Reardon is head coach after Barry Trotz leaves. And everyone was kind of like, oh, what's gonna happen? You know, is the Caps, the Caps gonna keep the same momentum that they've had, or are they gonna drop? now that Trotz is gone and Reardon has stepped up. And it turns out that wasn't the case. The Caps just kept the momentum going all season, and there was great expectation going into that first round of the 2019 playoffs. And Carolina threw something at the Caps that series that I remember very prominently. Carolina came at the Caps that series, in every single game that series, with a very, very hard, very, very fast two-man forecheck. And that, in my opinion, turned out to be the true kryptonite for the Caps that season. That two-man forecheck, that very aggressive two-man forecheck, smothers a slow defensive breakout. And if you're not moving that puck up the ice as fast as possible or D to D and up the ice as fast as possible, you're going to get broken down onto by two defenders. You got nowhere to go D to D. You end up turning the puck over, which we saw numerous times in that Carolina series, and that ends up going in the back of your net. And that's what this game reminded of. The Rangers came at the Caps all night with a strong two-man forecheck. Well, all night, except up until it was 3-1, and then the Rangers just sat back at a 1-4 and just defended psh, their blue line. They're like, you're not gonna get in here, and you're not gonna score, but it didn't matter because then Ovi ends up scoring off the draw anyway, and whatever, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> that two-man forecheck killed our defense tonight. A defense that, in my opinion, was already kind of shaky and already was struggling to find its own identity, and that was just completely exploited tonight. I mean, props to the Rangers on that one. The Rangers have the youngest team in the NHL right now. And correct me if I'm wrong, I'll look this up, but I'm pretty sure the Caps have the oldest team in the NHL right now. I mean, let's be real, having Zdeno Chara on your team doesn't help that cause. But age truly just is a number in that situation. What isn't just a number is the speed, the youthfulness, and the aggressiveness of a forecheck to get into a zone to create havoc on two defenders who are struggling as is and struggling to communicate with each other and struggling to pass the puck between each other, turning pucks over and getting it into the back of the opposition's net. Now, all those hard presses by a two-man forecheck didn't come back to bite the caps in the butt this game. It was other errors that caused that. However, I think building over time, hole one, 
two periods of time, that constant forechecking pressure and not knowing where to go with the puck and not being able to exit your zone cleanly and not being able to enter the zone cleanly, getting caught in the neutral zone, turning pucks over there, creating transition the other way. It just all adds up on top of each other. And that's what creates an overall poor showing by the Caps today. This was by far the worst showing by our Caps this season. And it really sucks coming off of the back of a really bad beat to the Boston Bruins giving up that three goal lead, giving up two three goal leads to the Boston Bruins. In light of such a bad showing, I'd like to give you Brad's three big steps for the Caps getting back into the win column. Step number one, get 12 forwards on the ice and six defenders on the ice. Like, there's nothing else to say about step one. It's as simple as that. Fix whatever cap situation is preventing 12 forwards being out there and get your strongest six defenders out there. And for all those keeping track, I'll give you a hint. Jensen and Orloff are not your strongest defenders right now. Trevor Van Riemsdyk had a very shaky game at best, but he gets a pass because he's had good games leading up until tonight. I'll just pass it off as a bad game. Char didn't have his best game tonight either. He gave up the puck numerous times and that third goal does not happen if he does not get beat hard to that puck just inside the blue line. Chara is not the best defender right now. And John Carlson, I can't even count how many times you turned over the puck today. I don't know what's going on with you. You're usually Mr. Reliable. You're usually the guy that we can always count on. And Brendan Dillon, oh. Well, actually, Brendan Dillon, you keep doing what you're doing. Step number two in Brad's road back to the win column for the Washington Capitals. Get more grind them out goals like we saw from Carl Hagelin tonight. The Caps were getting beat to every puck in the first period. They started playing a little bit better in the second period, but the first goal is only happening because of a hard net drive by Carl Hagelin. Kind of what he did last game, it ended up coming off the board, but it stays on the board this time and we need more goals like that. That third line is consistently putting bodies on bodies below the net and creating chances. If they keep doing that, the Caps will continue to start getting more goals, but it got to be an all buy-in by all the lines. We can't just have one hard checking line that's creating chances by putting body on body. We have to have everyone playing the same game. And if more grind them out goals that just deflect off of anybody anyhow and just happen to go in, if more goals come like that, more success will come to the caps. The finesse goals, those will come. Those will come over time. But the grind them out goals, the break them down goals, the just get it in the back of the net any way you possibly can goals, that creates more chance elsewhere on the ice. And the guys like Ovechkin and Backstrom and Vrana and Wilson and Oshie, your skill guys, they're gonna start scoring even more because of guys like Dowd, Hathaway, and Haglin on that third line. Step number three in Brad's road back to the wing column for the Washington Capitals. Us. Yes, you and me, the fans. I can't tell you how much negativity I've seen about this team after two regulation losses. Yes, last game was very, very bad, giving up a three goal lead and losing 5-3 as your first loss in regulation. And yes, this game was very, very bad, going down early and staying down the entire game and not being able to claw your way back in. However, however, and I cannot emphasize this enough, it is our job as fans to be a fan to cheer on your team and to support them. What are the Caps if they don't have our support? I am a firm believer of karma and you start throwing that negativity out into the universe and the guys will start playing with that negativity. Folks, I just ask you to just be a good fan. Cheer on your team. Yes, you're allowed to be upset. I get upset a lot. I'm very emotionally invested in this game and in this team. And I get very, very upset at times, probably more than I should, but you always have to remember, as mad as you get when things are going wrong, that is as happy as you have to be when things go right. Balance it out. Think back to how you felt the night of June 6, 2018. Hey Brad, what happened June 6, 2018? Ah, you know what I'm talking about. Seriously, think back to that day. Think about how you felt that night and how awesome it was to be a fan at that time. Okay, now think back to game one against the Penguins 
in round two that same year. Think about how upset you were. Think about how frustrated you were that here we go again. We're losing to the Pens again in round two. It's just like last year and the year before that and the year before that and the year before that and the year before. We are allowed to be mad in those times. We are allowed to be upset when things don't go right. But guess what? You have to turn it around like that and get right back behind your team because then the next game, you might win. And then the next game, you might win. Then you might lose one and it might be tied 2-2. And then you might win game five. And then guess what? You might win game six in overtime. And then guess what? You might go on to the Eastern Conference Finals. You might take it to a game seven and you might have a third liner come up and score two goals that game. Then you might make it to the Stanley Cup Finals and you might go down the first game. You might think, ah, it was a good run, but we're, we're not gonna make it. But then you might win game two and then game three and then game four. And guess what? Then game five might come around and you might take that beautiful, beautiful cup. Okay, not like you like physically take the cup, but like you like us as a fan base hypothetically take the cup and raise it over our heads again and have just another fantastic summer of celebrating the Caps as Stanley Cup champions. But guess what? That only happens if you stick with your team now. You get another two day break, Caps fans. So take your two days off and return to me on Sunday and be ready to cheer on as hard as possible. And then get ready to enjoy some nachos and wings because it's also Super Bowl Sunday. And the Caps have a really long history of playing at noon on Super Bowl Sundays. And I actually kind of enjoy it because then it's like a whole day of sports. You know, you get to watch hockey at noon and they get a little break, eat a bunch of awesome food, drink some beer. And then at night, you get to watch the Super Bowl. We will see you back here on Sunday, ready to cheer on the Caps against the Philadelphia Flyers. And that is going to be a huge matchup. And they are going to need every ounce of positive energy that you can possibly muster to take on the best team in the division. But what do I know? I'm just a fan. Hey, if you like this video, smash that thumbs up button for me. And if you enjoyed your time here, consider subscribing. I'd love to see you come back. And as always, let's go Caps! <laughs>